Anghase and welcome to the Boots on Midnight movie. I'm your host Donald. Once again, our film tonight is about lockdown and isolation, this time exploring the issues of romance under the apocalypse. It's the Roger Corman classic, Last Woman on Earth. Hey, it's not that kind of movie. Before we get to tonight's feature, we begin moving toward the conclusion of the Great Alaskan Mystery. Last time Jim washed ashore after being shot and Ruth kept him occupied overnight. Meanwhile, Jim's father and Dr. Miller welcomed Dr. House back in the warmest of fashions. Brandon, deciding broken hearts are best mended by moving on, rigs the cabin he shared with Dr. House to explode. Jim trips the detonator, reducing the cabin to splinters. And now, episode 11 of the Great Alaskan Mystery, The Tunnel of Terror. Welcome back! Tonight's movie is Last Woman on Earth. A couple and their lawyer go scuba diving, only to find an unknown disaster has destroyed all the oxygen on Earth, leaving them as the last living humans. They find they can live comfortably until romantic competition begins for the titular Last Woman on Earth. If you think your options on Bumble are grim, wait till you see what this woman has to choose from. And now witness the uh, approximately 70 minutes of Last Woman on Earth. Tonight's feature is Last Woman on Earth, the last of our films reflecting on pandemic, apocalypse, and isolation. In this movie, the inciting instant is never explained or of particular note. Instead, the focus is on what the survivors do, or more specifically, what the male survivors do. It's easy to compare this movie to the similarly named Last Man on Earth, which we screened two weeks ago. That's about the titular Last Man on Earth and the suffering and despair that comes from the isolation of there being no one else left. Despite the end of the world, he persists in his work of exterminating the infected, trying to contact others, and developing a cure. In this movie, the titular last woman on Earth is not the subject, but the object. The focus is on the drama of these two men fighting over her and what then results. Although there is no sex on screen, the movie is almost exclusively about sex and sexual morality. The opening credits themselves are a pan across a centerfold style picture of a woman, and the deciding moment of who the woman will be with comes when she learns that one of her potential partners doesn't want to have children, and then she reflects upon that in a church. It's not subtle. We saw a similar element in last week's film, in the year 2889, where there isn't much romance, but the father decides that breeding needs to start and instructs his daughter to pair off with a specific man. The other woman in that movie is a former exotic dancer who gets chastised when she dances for one of the other men. The message is clear. There is permissible sexuality and impermissible sexuality, and what determines the difference is who is in control of it. It's interesting to think of how the story would be different if it were actually about the last woman on Earth, a woman alone a la Vincent Price, or the woman being in control, that being the last woman afforded her a level of power and autonomy that she didn't have previously. Instead, we get this story of a crooked businessman who's a bit of a lech, potentially being cuckolded by a man sliding into despair and madness. What a pair! What a lucky gal! Real clear who we're supposed to be rooting for here! Things pick up a little in the second half, but the movie still remains kind of strange. There is at least a hilarious fight with fish coming up, so keep an eye out for that as we return to Last Woman on Earth. That was Last Woman on Earth, and when did I ever say it was good? Now for a look at our next feature. Young Valerie Taylor is worried about her romantic life. I'm very anxious about Dick. Dick? She's being courted by a count, but naked spirits keep appearing in her bed, and she's haunted by a severed hand. She may need help from the Marines before it's all said and done. Discover her terrible fate in Come On Leathernecks, next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. Not that I don't like this, but I'd like to know what the plot is. I have no idea what's going on anymore. Anyway, Kamsamni Don, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.